Welcome back to Martins and More. My name is Mari Ruch, and this episode is brought to you by our Patreon members. Join our growing community and enjoy early access to every episode, exclusive video versions of the podcast, behind the scenes footage, full length product demos, and so much more. We appreciate you. Where's Spoon Phillips at? Oh, yeah, he's talking to some guy about fingerstyle guitar or something. This is part two of our interview with Doug Young. We join our program already in progress. I'm looking for any effect that would make the guitar sound more like there's no effects on it. More more like it's just the natural sound of the guitar. So anything I can do, again, to, I think it comes back to what do I hear while I'm playing the guitar and can I reproduce that coming back over the speakers? So anything that helps me bring out the sound that, that I'm hearing. Um, sometimes it takes a, a, a bit of processing to do that. Uh, Put a bunch of expensive subtle. stuff in the signal chain to remove the signal chain, more or less, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it should sound... Usually, the, the the goal is just record, play it back, it ought to sound great. And and I'm usually happy with that. But then you start getting you know into the fine-tuning. Oh, a little bit of reverb, maybe a little EQ here, uh, maybe a, you know, a little of little compression, a little little something else. There's a handful of cool things out there. There's a plugin called Soothe that uh, is sort of a dynamic uh, multiband compressor that sort of searches and destroys things. So as you're playing, if you got a note that leaps out, it'll find it and mm. pull it down. Oh. So if you got a harsh note that you're playing, uh, it, it'll kick and, <laughs> and sort of tame it, you know. And uh, that, that's kind of, it, it soothes the guitar sound and uh, seems to yeah, work. If you have like nine life. extra hours after this is over, I've been trying to understand how to use multiband compression for about 22 years. And I'm in circles and circles and circles. I know what it's doing. And I, I'm sh- I think I'm sure that I know why you'd want to do it and how you'd want to actually treat the lows versus the mids versus the highs. I just, I spin out of control. So uh, kidding I, aside, I I would, have... I'd get online with you later if you can tell me what oh, the sure. hell to do with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's certainly uh, worth looking at. I, I, I don't use as much multiband compression uh, these days as I do uh, dynamic EQ, which is subtly different. These days, there's I, I had one of these years and years ago that, that was from TC Electronic, and then they stopped making it. And then for a long time, you couldn't find a dynamic EQ, and all of a sudden, they're everywhere. Uh, and what it basically is, is you act, it acts like an EQ. You can take a, a parametric EQ. You can take it and just graphically pulse. Like, say I have a, a booby bass note. I'll see it on the display. I hear it. I can reach up and pull that down. And then I can say, make it dynamic, which means only trigger when it exceeds a certain threshold, oh, wow. just like a compressor. Yeah. And so now what I've got is a bass cut on that note, but only when it's too loud. And so I'm not cutting the bass on my overall track. All I'm doing is if I, the, the few times, you know, that I wailed on that bass note or something, it will pull it down for me. And so in that sense, it's multi-band compression, but it's not like four band multi-band. It's like as many bands as you want. And you can tune it in on almost a specific note. And good for squeaks and things like that, too. You, know, you get a squeak wow. in there, you just take the squeak and say, whenever that squeak happens, just turn it down. Wow. So uh, it's like a third octave multi-band leveler? Yeah, kind of. Uh, that's and weird. You can set, I've never yeah, heard of you that. Can, yeah, you can set the threshold, and you can set how much cut you want. Um, so I use that more than, than a strict you know, four-band classic multi-band compressor. Interesting. Here we're talking about all of this 21st century wizardry, and you're holding a 1926 double-18. <laughs> and uh, maybe it's a good time to... to Wake up the people who have no interest in tech stuff and, and play that other cut of you playing that old Martin on one of your other. Um, sure. And tell me the story. I'm always curious. I know, I know, like, Kotke would come up with, with names for tunes that have nothing to do with the tune. But this tune sounds like it has a story with it. Yeah, it's not not uh, not a cocky level story, but this was just a, a, a little ballad that I had written and I was playing it. I didn't have a name. And uh, I, I have a cat. I had a cat, Missy, who was uh, long gone, unfortunately. But when I recorded that tune, uh, she was a bit of a terror. She would run around and knock over my mic stands and, you know, it was generally a, a, a nuisance in the studio. But while I played that tune, she sat down and curled up at my feet and she was laying at my feet when I recorded it. So uh, I named it While She Sleeps. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, it's a little unfair. Anybody watching this program, if they're ever going to be a guest on our show, they have some real uh, serious uh, shoes to fill with the, the quality you're giving us in these videos. The two cameras oh. set up, the, the mics you talked about, the, the studio. If anybody else wants to be on Martin's More, you better bring your A game <laughs> if you want to record some stuff. I'm not putting up with any QuickTime or laptop camera <laughs> crap or... It's serious now. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun to have the multi cameras. Like I say, I use it for lessons and things like that a lot. But uh, I've got uh, foot pedals that I can switch the cameras with. So nice. if I'm making a quick and dirty video, um, I have a separate room that I uh, have set up for my, my YouTube videos that I use. I have a different setup. And that, there I actually ah. film with multiple cameras, do all that stuff in post and can do things. But here I can actually do live, limited, multi-cam stuff. Wow. Um, so it's kind of fun. And, and definitely handy when I'm doing teaching and stuff. So, Oh, yeah. I really have to resist talking to you the way I want to off camera because I have nine questions lined up that make no sense for this video. No one's going to sit <laughs> through my, what do you use for video editing and stuff? But I would like to email you later about a lot of that that oh, doesn't sure. well, weigh down oh. the program. Yeah, and no, of course, glad, after to, this, glad to chat anytime. Thank you. After this program airs, if anybody says, oh, you should have talked about that, we'll just have to get you back on. Um, so. <laughs> okay. Well, oh, okay. While I was Another... playing, I switched. Uh, you, uh, Spoon, you'd ask right. about the Claxtons, and I grabbed grab one of my Claxtons. Ooh. Um, and um, so we've just moved that? up. Do you uh, hear those folks? One of his Ed Claxton guitars. Yeah, I have two at the point. Okay. I've, wow. had, I've had more, but I have two at the moment. Um, yeah, we, we jumped a century ahead uh, <laughs> from 26 to uh, uh, <gasps> not too long ago. Um, wow. This is an EM, uh, which is Ed's uh, small jumbo size guitar. Uh, I was I thought it was an o, meant OM, but actually it stands for Ed and Margie, because Marjorie, which is his wife. Um, and it's just his sort of basic uh, standard model that he uses. Except his basic model is pretty nice. He he has a stash of incredible Brazilian rosewood that he uses on most of his guitars. Um, wow. Ed, Ed, unfortunately, is retired at this point. So uh, I, I've heard of a few people trying to coax him out of retirement to build a few more guitars. I'm not sure how, how successful they'll be. So uh, the, this may be it. But uh, I've had this guitar for a while now, um, maybe five, six, seven years or something. But I still think of it as new. And it's definitely a modern. It's, this is more of the style that, um, that I... Uh, keep focusing on I, I you know tam mentioned that i have a bunch of luthier built guitars i uh i sort of zeroed in on that kind of early when i first started playing finger style i discovered this world of luthier guitars i went to some of the guitar shows healdsburg's right up the road not no longer held but that no. was a regular event um I, my first uh, custom guitar was uh, a kevin ryan guitar uh, wow. And I, I met Kevin at one of the shows and then subsequently found out that I had forgotten that I went to high school with him. Um, wow. But uh, <laughs> he was he was a few years away from me, and I, I only vaguely remember him. He, he remembered me more than I remember him because I was playing in bands and playing for the high school dances and things. But um, the uh, so I got one of his and uh, and that's sort it of also a small jumbo. Yeah, it's his uh, yeah, mission. Yeah, because he was that he was one of the real pioneers in that idea. Um, yep. Yeah, uh, the Mission Grand Concert uh, guitar. Um, so I have one of those, um, and that kind of really I've gravitated towards that kind of guitar, and I have probably more of them than I should. You know, you keep buying the same guitar over and over, uh, looking for just some slightly different flavor or something. Aww. But uh, but Ed's guitars are just are just wonderful. They just uh, they're just. Um, a perfect example of, of the, the right sound, the right playability. Uh, they feel right. They look right. There's there's nothing flashy. I don't like inlay. There's no inlay on the on the fretboard. So before I uh, before I forget, tell me about the neck shape. What's the neck shape like on his guitars um, compared to other necks? It's a it's a sort of a, a C shape. Uh, it's it's very comfortable. Um, how how do you describe a neck shape? I mean, it's uh, it's not unlike. A tailor, except I'd say it's a little thinner profile than a tailor. It's Tailors even thinner. Maybe a little, right. so yeah, thin. a little bit thinner. And, um, yeah, just, just a, a really smooth. You know, it's interesting. Uh, Ed carved all his necks by hand. I've been down to his shop while he's making them. He just got a draw knife, and he's doing every uh -huh. one. So, in theory, they're all different. But every one I've played has been remarkably consistent. So, I think he's got it 
got it down. I don't know how they do that. That's, that's just incredible. I think it's also, just, uh, it's also, is it short scale? Is this like a 13 fret guitar? Yeah, this is a 14 fret standard. Uh, I think the scale is, hmm, it's probably 25.4. Uh, maybe maybe twenty five five. Okay, I thought it was one um, of his thirteen frets. He makes a no, and I, I that's his, the other yeah. that's my other Claxton. I have a thirteen oh, okay. fret Malabar. That was the first one I got of his. Uh, yeah. He had that guitar at Healdsburg one year. Uh, I kept people kept telling me it was, it, he had it at the at the Healdsburg show. People kept saying you got to play this thirteen fret guitar of Ed's. And every time I went, somebody had it out. And I never saw it. Oh, so wow. after after the show, it didn't sell, and I went down to his shop and played it there. And I just said, "No, no, I'm bringing this home." Ed. <laughs> so, uh, so that's when I grabbed that one. And he's only made a, only made a few of those. He made, I've always uh, wanted to see one. Yeah, I've always been curious about them. But yeah, yeah. It's so it's a little smaller guitar. It's a kind of a double O sized guitar, thirteen fret. Um, Sound wise, it's not that different. I could play the two of them side by side, and you know that you, you hear the the Claxton sound, and uh, they they both uh, are just a nice balanced guitar. I'd, I'd use it for a lot of recording. The the album I did with uh, with Taya, I probably used this guitar on at least half the tracks. Wow! Uh, and then there was a point where we said, you know, we got all the other guitars, we probably ought to use them, and so I I sort of sort of deliberately started using others. And people can also hear them on your various videos on uh, Peghead Nation. Yes, you, you use this guitar. Um, no, I don't, I don't <laughs> think I use this guitar on any of the Peghead Nation. Oh, uh, I might have, I might have demoed it for them, but for for the lessons, um, for most of the lessons, I used a uh, Karis, uh which is oh. kind of an Olson like guitar. And the main reason I used it was just that I, I have no fretboard inlay on any of my guitars. And uh, I had, for some lesson on that I did with the Keras, I had put little stickers. You know, you can get fake inlay and put stickers <laughs> on the guitar so it looks like you have inlay. And that's better for teaching, you know, because you're there going, hey, I'm on the eighth fret, and people are, like, trying to count up your, your fretboard. <laughs> so uh, because I had fretboard inlays on that, I used that for all those Peghead Nation shoots. I think I used a couple different guitars, but mostly I did the Keras. Is there a clean way to ask you this question without it being without you needing to answer for an hour, when, when a lot of our listeners might aspire to have a great guitar and then they find one, I, I shouldn't speak for anybody but me, but I bet a lot of the people that we know in real life and on the program have a Martin and they might have a $1,000 guitar, $3,000 guitar. What did you go from to go into the luthier built guitars? And in your mind, what are you getting back when you make, I'll, I'll call it a graduation, if you don't want to buy a factory made Martin or Taylor or and put any, any word there, What's, what's your mindset when you, I want a Ryan, I want uh, one of these, like walk me through that a little bit for people that, that would never even think to do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think there's two angles. Uh, the, the guitar, so I, I had like, I had an old, I believe it was a Yamaha, but it was a B stock that had its name tag removed that I bought when I was very young, bought it from Lay's Guitar in Akron, Ohio. And I had that guitar until... My son still has it now. But that's the guitar I played for a long, long time, uh, even recently. And then one day when I started getting serious back around the, the Narada uh, CD encounter, I, I bought a Taylor. Um, and uh, and that, that was a nice guitar. I, it's a, a really, really good guitar. And that got me started on the idea of a guitar. But then, then I played the Ryan and I went, okay, I think this sounds richer and fatter and warmer. Um, and so... For the most part, I'm mostly interested in sound, and you know how it is with guitar. I mean, even even between multiple Martins, you, you different Martin models, different Martins, and even the same model, they all sound different. So it's a matter of chasing that tone and just hearing what you want. Um, with the custom guitars, you can also, uh, you know, you can often get whatever you want. Uh, an extreme, ca give me an extreme case. I don't have it handy here, but I've got. Um, I've got a little guitar that Tony Yamamoto made me. He's a luthier who used to live in uh, Dublin, California. He's moved back to Japan now. But he um, he used to come to many of my shows, and he'd always bring a guitar with him and let me try it. And Tony was one of these guys who didn't, he did not like he had his model. He would just build you whatever you wanted. And uh -huh. uh, he, he came up and said, I want to build you a guitar. What don't you have? You know, and we started talking about it. And uh, we ended up building a ultra short scale 12 string that is as if I was capoed at the fifth fret when it's normal. 
right? Without a capo, it's as high as that, that's that's the guitar open, and wow. um, and so it's this little tiny high tuned twelve string guitar, and uh, there are a few guitars like this out there now. Uh, Valette makes one that's kind of similar now, but for the most part, you're not going to walk into a guitar store and find a guitar like this. So you really can get something that's custom. You, it, it could be uh, visual. Maybe you want some custom inlay. Maybe you want your name and lights on the fretboard. You know, what, whatever you want, they can, they can do that. Or maybe you want a custom neck profile or a wider neck. Uh, that, that's uh, one thing. Uh, like Ed's guitars are actually, they're a tad short of 1 and 13 sixteenths, but they're a little bit wider, and I like the wider neck. So... Yeah. Those kind of things. I, I'm looking for the spec. I'm looking for the sound. Mostly, it's the sound, though. You know, I. Um, and th- and that's a interesting thing when you think about a custom guitar is ordering one. Just like if you picked up three Martins off the rack at the guitar store, they may not sound exactly the same, even if they're the same model, because it's wood and things change. Yeah. Custom ordering one is a little bit of a of a gamble. You don't know how it's going to turn out. Might be the greatest gar- guitar ever, or you might say, oh, "I don't know, I don't like this one." Uh, so, in some respects, picking you know these days we have a lot of options. You can go to Dream Guitars or Guitar Gallery or any of these places, and you can pick from existing Luthiers guitars and uh, check them all out. Pick the one you like. Uh, that's a safer bet. But if you're adventurous and you don't mind ordering, you can. It's kind of fun to work with the luthier. With uh, with Kevin's guitar, uh, I went down and picked out the wood in his shop. Um, you know, and you, it it just makes it an adventure. That's pretty neat. You have to do your research though, because we definitely know people who did this and were, like you said, disappointed with what the end result was because they really didn't think it through. They just imagined what this wood would sound like with that wood and that body size and that neck shape and. And it helps to do your, you know, do your research. Nowadays, like you said, we can you can go to Dream Guitars online and at least get some idea of what some of these things sound like. Yeah, this, this you... guitar, in fact, uh, somebody else ordered this guitar from Ed. Uh, some, someone ordered the guitar and apparently didn't like it and told Ed they didn't after the fact. No, uh-huh. sorry. And, and, and most of the luthiers will let you do that. You know, that could, it's... Uh, you'd hope that doesn't happen very often, <laughs> but uh, many right. of the Luthers will give you an approval on the guitar. And apparently somebody ordered this guitar and somehow or other, it didn't meet their expectations. And uh, I heard that he had it available because somebody had turned it down. I ran down because he's just down the road from me and played it. And went, whoever turned us down is crazy. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to grab it. Yeah. And like, um, what could you, you know, think they, what do you think they wanted that that guitar wasn't given them? No, no idea, but you know, we're all our tastes different. Everybody's attack is different, hands different. So, yeah. uh, one person might get a different sound out of a guitar, and, and maybe they just had something else in mind. I don't know. Okay, let's hear it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean. Just noodling. <laughs> wow. Um, I don't dislike yeah, that. Yeah, it's a nice sounding guitar. Ah, gorgeous. Same woods on your 13 fret, or is that different? Uh, this is Brazilian rosewood, uh, which uh, Ed has just this incredible. St- oh, you're just going to see reflections, but mm. kind of dark. Brazilian rosewood, and um, I believe it's German spruce top, European and spruce. And what about of some the, kind. your other Claxton? That's what I was saying. Uh, the other one is the same. Same woods. Oh, okay. that, that's kind of what Ed likes to build with, okay. uh, Ger- German or European spruce. I mean, I've seen a few others. I've seen a Koa Claxton. I've seen a mahogany Claxton. But in general, he's got this uh, amazing stash of Brazilian rosewood, and he likes the European spruce. Uh, so most of the Claxons I've come across have been that wood combination. You make a real good point there, Quick Doug. Is there a way we can point viewers to a website of yours to see pictures of, the, of these, or can we – Coax you into taking a couple pictures for us sometime. Oh yeah, sure. I, I can. I can try to take some pictures. <laughs> Photographing guitars is hard, you know. They, every, you just get reflections and shining and so on. But I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm playing this guitar on my YouTube channel. So if you if you visit okay. my YouTube channel, uh, um, just search for Doug Young and ignore the the, the bodybuilder Doug Young and find find <laughs> the one that's me. <laughs> and um, so that's uh, where I've also, seen it. I know I've seen you playing it. I was thinking Big Head Nation, but it's your site. That's yeah, I think, uh, and, and and I also have a bunch of videos <clears throat> on my 
<clears throat> my site is dougyoungguitar.com, and I do have some uh, videos there on the page. They're just, uh, nice. you know, embedded YouTube videos, and I'm sure I'm playing this on, on a number of tunes. Right. It's a it's a kind of a guitar I grab first quite often, although I have others. Uh, I have a Kathy Wingert guitar that is just wonderful. I've been using that quite a bit lately. Cool. Uh, that's a very different instrument. Is it fair to say that you have 20 guitars? Uh... I don't know. Or more. I don't. Ca- my my wife has counted them. She has a spreadsheet. <laughs> I think that she keeps track of them on uh, about a dozen. I think maybe maybe more. If I add up a lot of little things laying around that I don't play. Uh, I mean, I have so, do you want to tell them why I said the word twenty? Ah uh, yes, we have this game that we play called Twenty Questions. <laughs> I guess that's. The, I was so wrapped up talking about. It, I didn't even catch the hint. So 20 questions is the game where usually one of us, uh, the smart guy, which is Mario, or the wise guy, which is I, uh, think of a Martin guitar that's still available out there in, among, you know, for sale among the modern models. And the other one gets 20 questions to try to guess what uh, model it might be. And, um, and so we were going to impose this upon our special guest, Oh dear! <laughs> um, I think Mario wanted to do this just because he was hoping there's somebody out there that won't be as good as he is at this game. But I still think there's a pretty exactly. good chance he's wrong. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and just to be, let's be really fair now because he's not here. Taya was all like, "I got this," and you can do one of two things: you can be the one that thinks of the guitar, and we can guess what you're thinking, which is sort of easy. Or we could think of the guitar, and you have to figure out what's in our mind. And as soon as Taya recognized that's the one way to play, said, "Oh no, 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 no." So it's all it's up to you however you want to play this but you have to play somehow. I'd be better at I won't be good at either one but I'd be better at guessing probably. Okay. Well, we'll okay. see. <laughs> so do you want to pick one more or should I? I will pick one this time. So as Spoon said, I'm going to be thinking of a Martin guitar. It's got to be available for sale today. Nothing discontinued. Nothing custom shop. It's just walk into a guitar store in California and it'll be there. I have the guitar in mind, 20 questions on the clock, and go. Oh, I've got to ask the question. Okay. Uh, oh, we forgot to mention, you're allowed to guess, I'm sorry, you're allowed to guess up to three models, but he okay. forgot to mention that part. So. Okay. Is it a, a small guitar or a large? It's got to be a yes or no question. <laughs> oh, oh, is it a small guitar? That's that it? sort of subjective. You have to give me a size. Okay. Is it a, is it a uh, is it a double O? Yes. Ooh. Oh, wow. wow. Jeez, I didn't expect to be on that fast. Uh, let's Neither see. Did I. Is it um, is it under a thousand dollars? No. Okay. Um, is it one of their authentic models? No. Mm, no. Um, hmm. I thought he was going to guess it in two. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think. Uh, let's see. So, is it? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm stumped for questions. Actually, <laughs> is it? Well, mahogany? you can narrow it down. Narrow. It, but that's that's what we can do. We can narrow it down by tone wood. No, it's not mahogany back and sides. Okay. Is it rosewood? Yes. It's a rosewood back and sides. Is it a spruce top? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's a six-string guitar, I assume. You assume or is, you ask? Is it a six-string guitar? <laughs> yes. Okay. I just saw a Martin 12 the other day. At, uh, let's see. Um, is it short scale? Yes. So you said it was a, it was a triple O. No, double you never o. said that. You never asked. A, oh, double O. Double O, sorry. Double O. Double O. Yeah. Double o uh, Rosewood, spruce, short scale. Spruce, rosewood, uh, double O. Wow. You know, I'm I'm terrible at bar, at uh, bottle numbers. Uh, so it is it just a double O 16? No. No. Hmm. You can 15. phone a friend. <laughs> yeah, Spoon, what do you think? 
<laughs> well, they don't make many double O's, and there's and I think they only make one rosewood double O these days. So, what's like the most common rosewood style out there? I don't like, actually know. Like your Lawrence Juber, for example. Um, oh, well, that's an OM, though, right? Yeah, um, but what's an OM what? Oh, oh, 28. So, uh, so a double O 28. That's yes. it. Yes. I didn't make a 14 fret double 28 until really recently, just the past few years it came out. So I'm not surprised that that was kind of a hidden in the weeds there, but congratulations, yeah. you made it through. <laughs> Before I forget, another geek question for you is, what do you got on your thumb? What are you playing with? Oh, yeah, thumb pick. Uh, you know, I got started on thumb picks and uh, acrylic nails fairly early on. Um, the the uh, the acrylic nails side pick sidetrack from your thumb pick question. The acrylic nails are my wife's fault. Uh, we went to see uh, Martin Simpson play, and uh, she was she was blown away by how not only how good he was, of course, but his sound. She said, "You don't sound like that," and I I said, "No, he's Martin Simpson." <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she she all night on the way home she said, "I know what it is. It's his nails. You don't have nails," and so. We came home and she got her fake nail kit out and put fake nails on me and played. And they don't stay on very long like that. But it was enough to go, oh, yeah, I got a louder, more powerful sound. And she said, that's it. Now you'll sound like Martin Simpson. Yeah, well, you know. Um, wow. So I so from that point on, I've had acrylic nails. And I also have an acrylic thumb pick, but I've just never been happy with the, the sound. I mean, it's okay. But I've never been happy with the sound of my thumb. And I started playing around with a thumb pick. Um, and so it, it changes the angle of your hand a little bit, gives you a little more precision, and it balances out the volume of my acrylic fingernails. So, so that's just uh, like a basic faux tortoise shell. This is a uh, Dunlop medium, and I, I don't know what it's a tortoise uh, colored, uh, kind of a kind of a blonde. It's a little different color. I forget what they call it. a calico. That's what they call these. And for some reason, I just tend to like the, the shape that these are, and I try to order them. Sometimes I use a Dunlop medium. Yeah, I'm, I have to gravitate toward them. I, I did the same thing years ago. I saw a player, a guy named Howard Emerson, at a guitar show, yep. and he said his wife had talked him into going with the nails because his nails were getting more brittle. That started mm -hmm. happening to me. And, but I now have the dreaded fungus on my ah, thumbnail yes. so i'm not yeah. gonna be able to put a nail on there for like six months so i'm going to start looking at the thumb picks i was very curious yep. now i want to just recommend to you and i have you here if you've never tried silk wrap nails having a salon put silk wrap on i think they sound more like real nails and they're much stronger and they last a lot longer than the mm -hmm. acrylics they don't rip i think rip i've tried the silk wraps oh. once but i haven't stuck with it i you know during the pandemic i had to try all kinds of things so i couldn't go to the nail salon and so i tried doing my own and I tried a bunch of things. I tried, there's these things called tip tonics that are uh, pretty cool. They sound good. They're very hard and they kind of slip over your nail and attach with glue. And uh, you put them in a little little oh. heater thing for a few seconds, heats up the glue, you stick them on. And then when you're done, you just take them off. I tried no those kidding. The I pandemic. may look into that. Uh, that wow. sounds fascinating. The, 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 the thing is you got to put them on every time, you know, so... Mm -hmm. I'm used to just walking around the house, grabbing a guitar and playing. And so with that, mm -hmm. I had to say, oh, I'm going to play guitar now. And I had to put them on and so on. But they did sound good. I tried those. I tried a couple other little things. And I tried doing my own acrylics, which I found out how hard it is to... Uh, to I did those during the pandemic. Yeah. 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 Annoying. What about regular yeah. finger picks, like a regular thumb pick? I've never tried those. Uh, I, I have a few somewhere here. I mean, I, I wouldn't say never. I put them on and went, yeah, this would... You know, anything you do like this, you got to practice and, and learn. I think when I yeah. first put on the... Uh, when I first went to the thumb pick, especially, uh, I had to sort of relearn songs. You know, I'd sit down and try to play a song that I already knew. And it just, I don't know, it changed your hand angle. It was a different feel. And uh, oh, yeah. I kind of started by saying, well, okay, old songs, I won't use a thumb pick. And new songs, I'll start out with the thumb pick. Uh -huh. And then over time, I got used to it. And it was fine. But it's always a, an adjustment with anything. And I think the same thing would be true with, with finger picks. I'd have to play with them a lot. 
Part Our of the friend reason. L. McMean's often telling me, well, like, you know, he'll he'll sit with me, he'll visit the store, and he'll go home and email me. You know, I forgot to tell you, try the thumb pick again. He thinks I'd sound so much better with a thumb pick, and I try it. Like, it feels like my I have to play the guitar three feet in front of the sound hall because I'm so used to not having it. I love what it sounds like, and to be really honest, I love what finger picks sound like. And I don't give them more than two afternoons, and it's it's my own fault. But I would love to master that, except for yeah. like you're saying, walk around. I want to play another guitar. I don't want to have to take them on and put them off. And I bet you that's part of my problem too. But yeah, I, I think you know, I think it was Al who actually convinced me to try the thumb pick too. He kept saying, "Try thumb pick, try thumb," huh. and I and I finally tried it. Um, you know, I just got them in my pocket all the time, so. I'll just be. Oh. In fact, I'll be just wa- out walking around and realize I've slipped the thumb pick on my thumb, and I'm walking around. <laughs> <with thumb picks. laughs> well, in case a guitar falls out a window, you can catch yeah, it. Yeah. Thumb pick. it yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going past an hour and a half now. I, don't, I want to ride that fine line of not cutting you off and not taking your whole day. Can you think of anything we didn't touch on that we should make sure we include? Um. No, I don't think anything terribly important. Uh, you know, we just talked about uh, a little bit of everything that's going on. I'm um, what I'm currently doing is trying to record all my backlog of recordings, um, trying to do some teaching. I don't do a lot of one-on-one lessons, but I always seem to have a, a few students kind of uh, ad hoc uh, that I do one-on-ones with. But I also do a lot of uh, of uh, workshop teaching. Uh, I just uh, taught a workshop at the South Bay Guitar Society uh, event few weeks ago getting ready to do a guitar camp here in a couple weeks it's always fun um so anyway you know if anybody's interested if i can help anybody with anything i'm glad to uh, hook up with people and uh, see what i can do to help usually it's uh usually my online lesson things that i do are just people that approach me wanting (coughs) wanting to learn a song you know usually one of mine or they want help with alternate tunings or something like that do you have offer any tab of your tunes? Oh yeah, I have. You know, I usually write my stuff out as I'm as I'm composing it or arranging it, just because I'll forget it if I don't. Oh. So, <laughs> um, and it's a different way of looking at things. As uh, you know, there's playing it by ear and this and that. But sometimes when you write things out, you see it a different way, and and you make changes just because you're you're visualizing the music differently. So I write almost everything out, and uh, I have a bunch of tab on my website some of it's up there for free um excellent and and, uh and some of it's in books i've got a bunch of books out uh of tunes and things so this really was very valuable and i got a lot out of it i i could seriously bring you and taya back every other week and still learn everything i can learn (laughs) more new stuff every time both of you talk uh please when you see him again thank him for inviting us to invite you because i'm glad we got both of you in front of the camera both of us are big fans of both of you. I, I can say that for, well, thank you. for sure. And it's, it's always a lot of fun to, to geek out on this stuff. This episode went a little bit long, got a little bit into the weeds. Uh, it was bound <laughs> to be nerdy from the, from the top. So if you guys came here expecting seven or eight songs and just light conversation about guitars, that's our fault. But we, we couldn't have Doug on it and not dig, <laughs> dig deep into all this kind of stuff. But I, I think it's been a really great resource. And I want to thank you personally for, for taking time to being on Martin's and more. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Spoon, any parting words? Well, I, uh, I'm i looking forward to um, going deeper into some of your website stuff and and uh, particularly uh, maybe getting some tabs for some of the tunes. So, so, because that's something I've used to do a lot and I haven't done it in a very long time is learn somebody else's stuff. So I think I will be reaching out for too long. I don't do all that much of it either, but it it is always interesting just to sort of get inside somebody else's head, you know. Oh, you know, we didn't uh, we didn't mention the pickup uh, stuff on my website either, which uh, most ah. people probably know about. And just real quickly, just tell you that that all you know that just came about because, like everybody, I'm frustrated with my pickup sound, you know. And I I started years ago. I start I tried a whole bunch of pickups, didn't like any of them. And I had this pile of pickups sitting there that I'd pulled out of guitars. And I thought, you know, before I throw these away or give them away or sell them, I had to just record them all. Maybe somebody would like to hear what they sound like. And so I recorded five or six of them and um, put them up. And people started sending me other pickups. And people, some people sent me guitars with pickups to record. And the wow. thing just grew just grew from there, you know. And uh, it's, uh, it's a tough thing to do because I'm just recording the raw sound of the pickups. It's not really reflective of what you're going to get, you know, playing live through an amp or anything like that. But uh, people seem to find it useful, and I certainly found it interesting because I ended up comparing a lot of pickups, including ones I never would have tried. And um, 
in oh, the yeah. end, I in the end I found stuff that worked for me, and and I've been pretty lazy about adding more pickups over the past many years. It's kind of kind of stopped where I'm at, just because uh-huh. I'm I've got pickups in all my guitars that I'm happy with and done playing around. Well, I I can say for sure that I know a lot of people get a lot of value out of that. Whether or not you think that that's the best way to really look at a pickup and get an honest idea of what it's going to sound like in your amp, it's not technically. But things I've done in the past, I've actually gone to your website, downloaded some of those things, taken them into maybe not a CD player, but some kind of a portable thing, plug that into a PA system or an amp, and that gives you the next sort of step where what this direct signal might sound like. I know it's not really uh, exactly the same as plugging something in as far as impedance, but taking the the raw signal that you offer everybody and, and getting a a fair shake of what they sound like. It might not tell me the best sounding pickup, but it's a quick way to find out what really doesn't sound good or what really might disappoint me. So yeah, a quick thumbnail from that. If you're listening to this program and you're still here, check that out because it really is a a very, it's a very large selection. And am I right to think you have sound hole pickups, under saddle pickups, soundboard pickups, and some microphones? Are they the four categories? Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think I got all that, some dual source stuff. And, and I'm glad to hear you did that because that's exactly what I hope people would do. I mean, that's why I said if I just record it directly cool. into a digital recorder, then somebody can play that back through their amp, and it's the closest thing we can do to, to you know, me plugging into your amp and playing. It's not perfect, but uh, better than nothing. Oh, yeah. And I guess I should ask you a tangential question. What is the worst sounding pickup you ever heard, and why is it an under saddle? <laughs> <laughs> No, that's not fair either because they've come a long way. But is, they've come a long. You don't way. have to answer that. You don't have yeah, to. Answer yeah. that. I was going to say yeah, best, but that's even that's even more degrading because it's going to get somebody up mad at me and you. Uh, I, I could say on camera, I'm a big fan of trance, but that's I'll leave it there. I won't. I won't gush. And I went K and K because I was a sideman for a retired Broadway actor named Paul Yukina for some years, and everybody used K and K through the red eye. So that's what's in my guitars now because. It was easier for sound men if we were all the same thing. So, yeah, it it's a fun world, you know. It's it's own, especially the boutique pickups. I mean, there's the big uh, production ones, of course, but the, just like Luthier's guitars, there's all these boutique shops like Trance and K and K, and all mm-hmm. these guys are you know try to c- come up with better pickups. Uh, Teddy Randazzo with Dazzos. These yeah. are all very much like dealing with a uh, custom Luthier, and uh, they're just trying to create a boutique pickup that'll sound good. And so I, I kind of like uh, I like that. I like supporting those guys. I want to thank everybody for listening. If you made it this far, you're real troopers. I know we got a little bit long-winded there, but thank you, Doug, for all of your time and all of your insights. Spoon, always fun podcasting with you. From all of us at Martin's and more, thanks for listening. Hear you later. See you later. Mm-hmm.